Hello students, in this video we'll prove an example of the Tauberian theorem. Our theorem is the following. Tower. It says suppose that A1, A0, A1, An is a sequence of real numbers. Then, and let S, um, N be the partial sums, A0 all the way down to AN, and sigma N, the Gizarro means, so S0 plus S1 plus SN over N plus 1. Okay, those are Gizarro means. And the statement is, is the following. So if sigma n converges to sigma, in other words, if you're Chizarro summable, and n times a n, n times a n tends to zero as n tends to infinity, then s n, the partial sums converge to sigma, then s n converges to sigma. Okay. So remember that Chizarro summability is a weaker idea of is a weaker notion of summability than is actual summability. So if you're Chizarro summable and if you have this decay condition on your coefficients, then in fact you're actually still summable to the same value as the Chizarro limit. Okay, so that's our theorem. And so of course what we're going to do is we're going to let epsilon be greater than zero. So here's the proof. Let epsilon be greater than zero and observe. What are we going to look at? So let's look at the difference between Sn and sigma n. So Sn minus sigma n is going to be n plus 1 Sn over S over n plus 1 trivially. And then minus S0 plus S1 plus Sn all divided by what? All divided by n plus 1. Okay. And so over here, of course, what can we see? Over here, we are, we'll think about what these things are in terms of the ANs, right? So in terms of the ANs, this becomes N plus 1 times A0 plus AN over N plus 1, and then minus how many A0s are we going to have? We're going to have exactly N plus 1 A0s, right? So we have N plus 1 A0s, right? We're going to have NA1s. And then how many ANs are we going to have? We're going to have exactly just one of the ANs that corresponds to SN, so plus all the way down to AN, all divided by N plus 1. That's a sort of a backwards way of writing the Gizarro limits, right, in terms of sort of the radial decay cutoff, okay? All right, and so now, of course, all the A0s are going to cancel out in this calculation, and then how many A1s are going to cancel out? Well, I have N plus 1 A1s over here, and I have NA1s, so I have exactly one, N, so I'm going to pull up that 1 over N plus 1. Then I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a 1 A1, how many A2s am I going to have? By the same reason, I have two A2s all the way down to NANs. Okay. And so we've just shown us, we've just shown the difference between the difference between SN and the Gizarro limit is exactly what? Is exactly just 1 over N plus 1, the sum K goes from 1 to N of K A K, like that. Okay. Excellent. All right, so now we do the sort of the standard analysis thing. So we let epsilon be greater than we ever let epsilon greater than zero. I'm going to pick n1 and n such that sigma n minus sigma is less than epsilon over three if n is bigger than or equal to n1. That comes from the assumption that my sigma n converges to sigma. Then I'm going to choose n, n2 and n such that what? Such that a n times n is less than epsilon over 3 if n is bigger than or equal to n1. We can do this by this assumption over here. So I'm using my two assumptions. And now finally, I'm going to pick an n3 that's bigger than n2, right? So pick n3 and n such that such that 1 over n 1 over n plus 1 times the sum k goes from 1 up to n2, which is this n2 over here, of k a k 
is less than epsilon over three if n is bigger than or equal to n three. Because as n goes to it, this now, n two is fixed, so that sum from one to n two is a fixed number. So that number over there is fixed after I give you n two, right? So that's a fixed number. And then as n goes to infinity, this expression is going to zero. So I make this expression absolute value as small as I wish, right? Okay, excellent. So now let's estimate the difference in s, n, and sigma, okay? So how do we estimate s, n, and sigma? So now if n is bigger than or equal to the maximum of all three of these values over here, which I'm going to define to be my n capital, right? Then what happens? And let me estimate s, n minus sigma. Well, that is what? That is less than or equal to s, n minus sigma, n, plus sigma n minus sigma. And now sigma n minus sigma is easy to handle, right? That's less than epsilon over three by assumption, right? So that's less than epsilon over three plus s n minus sigma n, but we know what that is. That's going to be the sum. K goes from one to infinity of k a k times, of course, this one over n plus one, right? All right, so I'm gonna break that sum into two parts, right? So this is less than epsilon over three and then I'm going to do a 1 over n, 1 over n plus 1. The sum k goes from 1 up to uh, this n2, n2 of k a k. And then plus the sum 1 over n plus 1 from k2, um, from k2 up to infinity. Uh, what do we have over here? So now we have what? So now, of course, this is sigma n minus, uh, we have what? Now we have s n minus sigma, so that only goes up to n, right? So now I'm going to go up to n. So I go from, k goes from n plus, n2 plus 1 up to n of k, a, k, like that. Good. Now by assumption, what do I have? The first thing is less than epsilon over 3. Now what do I know? By choice, I know that this is less than epsilon over 3 plus epsilon over 3. And then finally, this term over here, past k2, what do I know about all the terms of the sum? Past n2, I know that an, a n times n is less than epsilon. So all those terms in this sum over here are individually less than epsilon over 3. So these terms are less than epsilon over 3. And now I have a sum of fewer, fewer than n terms of epsilon over 3. So that is also less than epsilon over 3. And all those together give me epsilon. So we've just shown now that s n minus sigma, so hence if n is bigger than or equal to this n capital, this implies that s n minus sigma is less than epsilon, and that proves that we are summable to what? That we are actually summable under this decay condition on the coefficients to the same limit as the Cesaro limit in the summability criterion. Thank you very much.